We're going to be having our Bible quiz next week. For those of you who were all nervous and anticipating, it'll be next week. We will have our Bible quiz quiz off. And all of you can see our star students in action in that. Yes, I shouldn't be up here yet. They might put me away. <laughs> Now we're heading to the end of Deuteronomy, ready for the the march into the promised land, the holy war we've been preparing for. Let's open our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 29. We have 29 and 30 tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your word. Your word is truth. It's the source of our faith, O oh God. Speak to us tonight, Holy Spirit. And guide and direct my thoughts and my words. May they be honorable to you, God. Burden in our hearts, O oh God, the truth that you want us to glean, that we might all walk in it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So God is addressing his people. He's not talking to heathens. He's talking to his people. He's talking to the people that actually go all the way back to Abraham. Remember Abraham. God came to Abraham and he made a covenant, a special <coughs> promise, an agreement with him. But it was very unique. It was a unilateral covenant. It was a one-way affair. God said, Abraham, he was a heathen. He lived a bunch of uh, amongst idolaters. He was an Aramean from Aram. He didn't know anything about the true God, but God came to Abraham. Why him? Because he chose to. And he said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. You're going to have many children. I'm going to take you to a special land. And through you, the entire world is going to be blessed. And all Abraham had to say was, all right, Lord, what is it? I believe. And that's all it took. The very fact that he had faith in his God, he didn't even know that God revealed and called and chose him, that that solidified his relationship with God, same way it is with us. And as his child now, as his covenant agreement there that he had with God, now God is going to show him what he can do to honor and please him. You see, this all happened before he circumcised Isaac. This all happened before he offered up Isaac as a sacrifice willingly, and yet God intervened. He believed God, and therefore he obeyed. It's a key thing. But now the children of Israel have gone from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, and then Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and his sons became the tribes of Israel. And remember, they're all a part of God's special called out people. They ended up in captivity. We know the story. They cried out to God and God heard their cry and he remembered his promise to Abraham. God is a promise-keeping God. And he calls the people of Israel and he calls them, he raises up Moses and he's gonna take them where? unto himself because they're his people and then to that what promised land that he had promised them <coughs> took them out and we know the story they didn't get it did they they didn't really know God the way Abraham did it at least most of them didn't but some of them did and those that believed God had faith and they persevered and they went on and they obeyed well, now we have a situation where they're supposed to go from point A to point B, from Egypt to the Promised Land, and, and you know what that story is, and then it's going like this because they refuse to obey God. And they said, we, we'd rather die in the desert. And God says, you know what, you want to die in the desert? That's what you're going to do. So now the new generation is raised up, and God now has the children, everyone who was under 20 years old, 
better, better life. They've grown up now, and now he's got a whole new group. Again, they're God's people. They're called out. And now he's trying to organize them, and they're getting ready for a holy war, Amen. a jihad. Yes. They're going to go in, and they're going to take the land that God has promised them. But he's organizing them as a theocracy where God rules. It's like a country where God rules. He's the president. He's the commander-in-chief. He's the one that's going to tell them he's responsible for providing for them, for taking care of them, for being strong, being faithful to them. And their job is to say, yes, God, what is it you want me to do? And he took some time explaining to them exactly what he wanted them to do. Don't have any other gods. No idols. Please don't take my name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. On and on and on. Basic commandments. That's all you need to do. Listen to me. That land there, <laughs> filled with giants for real. They outnumber you. They're bigger than you. They've got walled cities and you have nothing. But I am the commander in chief. I'm your general. I'm going ahead of you, and I will help you take that land. And so now they're getting ready. They've heard it. Now it's time for them to renew what they call an agreement or a covenant with God. Oh, yeah, they're God's people, but they're going to agree. God, we're going to trust you that you're going to take care of us, that you're our God. You'll never forsake us. We remember what you did when you took us out of captivity and you protected us, and you've taken us this far, and you helped us, provided for us, even when we were wandering around, rebellious, you still provided food for us, our clothes didn't wear out, everything, and you brought us up on the other side of the Jordan River, and you allowed us to defeat the kings, of the two king kings of Sion and, and, and Og on the other side of the river, and now we've got two and a half tribes already have all of their livestock, and they're they're feasting, and oh God, you're great. And Abraham said, I mean, uh, Moses is saying, remember what God has done. And I think the same thing for us. I'll say it again and again and again. Did you wait patiently for the Lord? Did he hear your cry? Did he lift you out of the slimy pit, out of the muck and mire? Did he set your feet upon a rock and gave you a firm place to stand? Did he put a new song in your heart, a hymn of praise to your God? Don't forget it. Has he been faithful to you in the past? Has he protected you? Has he guided you? Has he provided for you? Don't forget it. That's what he's trying to tell these people. Mostly, don't forget what he's done for you. Don't forget who God is. Our God is greater. Our God is... That's our God. Don't just sing it, believe it. Pastor's been stressing. With all that, knowing who he is and so forth, look at chapter 29. Look at verse 9. Because of all that I just told you, verse 9, 29 says, Therefore, keep the words of this covenant and do them. That's the basic laws. Why? That you may prosper in all that you do. You see, you don't have to be good in order to get God. Amen. It's because you have God. Now, if you obey Him, He will reward you. Amen. And if you don't obey Him, He will take you to the woodshed. You will experience what the Old Testament says, curses, but He will spank your butt. Because He's a loving God. Because you are His child. Therefore, you know His love. Jesus says, you love me, keep my commandments. Since you love me, keep my commandments. You know, it's basic as that. It's the same thing here. These are God's people. And he's saying, now listen carefully. Now, it's fascinating because as they go on, as he's speaking now, reminding them of this law, and now they're going to all going to agree with, they're going to keep that covenant right. He put the leaders right down in front. He had the pastors. He had the leaders of the different faces. He had the RAs. And then he had everybody else around. Why? Because it was their example that was going to be stressed in leading